Hey everyone, my name is Charlie and today I arrived at work with little incident really apart from a car getting too close to me on the road and then having to try and get around a highway maintenance vehicle. Whilst Ariana Grande's Into played in the background and all I could think about was Valentina and Monet Exchange in RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 4. Google it. YouTube it. You'll have some fun. What has happened since last we spoke? Not much, really. I finished writing the first story in the Doris novella, and I was going to register the book, and I was all set to bring the book out and say, look, I'm going to do it on August the 31st, two years after the last Doris book. You're all going to have a fun time. And something stopped me. I think I'm just going to wait until I finished the next story. Um and then register it, because I felt as though, because I was at this stage of writing, that I was thinking, do you know what, I could do this, I could bring out a book for people this year, I made a list of deadlines um, for me to fulfil for this book, and other book, and other books, um, and then I just stopped, and gave myself a breather, and thought, are you actually going to be able to do this, because previously, I made plans like this. If we go back to 2015, I finished writing the first Doris book in about four months, but that would, came with having worked on the book for nearly four years, not as a book, but as all these separate stories. And whilst I wrote about 40,000 words of new material in that four months, when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, it's not really a lot. Then I plan to bring out the second book in another four months, and I plan to like try and rush release books um, every three months and it was never going to happen and my friend Lindsay will tell you about it but also I can tell you I ended up taking the break during the period of unfathomable sadness because things happened in my life that year such as nearly being made redundant at work and um, my nan's cancer diagnosis and all those things happened just after I'd released Doris so it became an incredibly stressful time for me and I don't work while, while stressed and so I pushed the Doris book on the back burner, not because I'm not writing it, but because I just thought, let's give you myself some time to think about this. Um, also, let me know whether you actually want a book from me this year. Do you care whether I release multiple books a year, or would you rather just get a good book as and when I've written it? Something strange happened on Tuesday. I can't even remember whether I was watching or listening to... Oh, that was it. Somehow, I wa ended up watching the entirety of Fleabag in a day because of Lauren and the books. Um, she did a video about her March favourites. She mentioned Fleabag. I went to BBC iPlayer. I started watching it. And five and a half hours later, I was finished. I agree. It's fantastic. The writing's brilliant. It's a me blend of comedy and tragedy. And I was glad. I liked it. That's all I can say about it. I got inspired, suddenly, to write some more of my children's book. And for whatever reason, the characters just started kicking around in my head again as though, you know, we're still here. We're still waiting for you to finish rewriting us this you know, we thought you were dedicated to this story. Come on, chop, chop. And so I wrote a tweet on Twitter about what I was writing, but I didn't really get much done that day, apart from a few scribbles, because of aforementioned TV watching. Wednesday I was at work. That's, no, that, that was said really weirdly, wasn't it? Wednesday I was at work. Why did Wednesday sound so funny then? Wednesday I was at work, and then I went to see... The mouse trap in the evening, but I'll talk about that in a second. We're talking about the children's book. On Thursday, I finally sat down and wrote 3,000 words of the children's book. It was rewritten, and I was struggling with the chapter because of multiple things happening, and I struggle when I'm writing about a lot of characters at once. I don't know whether you've seen that before. I don't know. Maybe it works in my books. I have a great friend as an editor, and she helps me out a lot. We'll see how it looks it when it comes to finishing it 
but I'm really pleased with this draft. When I first wrote this book nearly six years ago now when I started it, I didn't feel as though I was as close to it as I feel now. I felt a sense of detachment because I was trying to show, not tell, and I was trying to, in my head, good writing was much better than story, and I still, I still appreciate good writing, and I would, uh, but I think that, I hate talking about a writerly voice, but I think that I was trying to avoid the voice that comes naturally to me, and in doing that I hindered the writing of the original draft so much so that there wasn't a lot of clarity in it as to what was happening, which is something I'm trying to think about now, and I'm trying to think about what all the characters are doing whilst events are happening, so that I can place them in the correct places as to where they would be as opposed to where I want them to be. Um, so... It's not a difficulty, it just requires more thinking on my part, which I think is another reason that I tend to go and write something else really quickly, because I don't know, that just feels like there's something different about the story. I've said before how I want to try and get this book traditionally published, and get, and I just feel as though maybe that's what makes me put more focus on it, and when I'm really thinking about it, I'm really thinking about it. It also meant that I got to listen to the How to Train Your Dragon soundtrack again. My friend Lily of Like Yoss Reads, don't know whether she's continuing to make videos, but it doesn't matter. She's the one who put me onto that, and yes, the soundtrack does work incredibly well when I'm writing this book. Go back to the mouse trap that me and my mother went to see on Wednesday, and it just wasn't as good as the first time we went to see it five years ago. The best part was some drama that happened pre-show. So, a gaggle of older people appeared once me and my mother had sat down with our drinks. We went in because, you know, the bar's full at these theatres, so you go, you sit down, you have your drink, you have a natter. And the room in front of us was quite empty. Sorry, there's someone across from me. Oh, they've realised where they're going now. So the row in front of me and my mother's quite empty, and the row in front of that is empty. And this gaggle of older people are going there, and it's just four older ladies at this point. And two of them are rushing to get in, one of them's got the walker. One of them has, so there must have been five at this point. One of them is stood at the end of the row, because she clearly wants the aisle seat. And this older lady with the walker is there, and her friend says to her, do you need the aisle seat? And she says, yes. And once she said yes... Um, I can just see the lady who's been waiting for the aisle seat get a bit <sighs> shrunken shouldered, annoyed, and then the lady with the walk out of nowhere goes, I was told we'd be sat on the front row. You'd think they'd put me on a front row with my walker. Jim told me I'd be on the front row, but then Jim will tell me anything to get me get him get me to do what he wants me to do. And I thought she reminds me of my grandmother. And that has been stuck in my head since Wednesday. Next, a group of six people came and went down the aisle in front of me with a huge piece of paper led by this really big, strong northern woman, blonde. And th she's saying to these two women who are clearly friends who haven't met up in a while and they're chatting over the wine. And she said, excuse me, excuse me, I, I, I booked all these seats. I booked three to nine. Getting at seat G3 tonight. I booked all these seats. Six seats. You're in five and six. So, actually, one of the women with whites. No, we're in the right seat, see? Five and six, we booked them. Oh, I can't. This is the woman with the hair. Oh, I can't believe this. I've been double booked. I can't believe this. Double booked. I can't believe Well, that's the, I'm, I'm going to speak to somebody now. I'm going to the box office. So, naturally, one of the women hands a friend a wine and then decides she's going to go with her. So, they go off together, leaving this woman's family stood against the wall, but now loads of older people are stood against the wall because they're trying to navigate how best to seat them di based on, you know, varying disabilities. A few minutes later, four women show up, mother, her two daughters and her mother, and just sit down and the lady who's been left with a wine leans across and said, there's been some problem with the seats, they've been double booked and the mother's there and she's like, you don't think they triple booked us? And one of the daughters says, I don't care, until someone comes and tells me I can't have this seat I'm having it. And she sat down, started eating Milky Way stars. A few minutes later, the mother goes off because she's clearly seen that you can have wine and alcohol inside the theatre. 
but also to make sure she isn't triple booked. When the big burly woman comes back, looks at her family and goes, I can't believe this. I did it wrong. I booked for 2.30. I should have been here five hours ago. And she turned around and led them all off. Fortunately, I believe the theatre did let them stay and just found them different seats. And the mother came back with a wine and she and her daughters were just chortling about it. But that drama was better than the entirety of the two and a half hour show we watched. So Thursday I wrote, Friday I was at work, cosy reading night, which you can catch in my vlog, and now we're here. My mother says she might show up today with coffee for me, which the thought of makes me inordinately happy, because for whatever reason I am not sleeping again, and insomnia does not look good on me. I know this, my hair never looks right when I haven't slept. Um... And that's about the measure of things, really. Over the next week, I'm hoping to finally finish reading Dragon Haven by Robin Hobb to get in some more Joe Nesbo and to just read some more flaming books and maybe a veer away from fantasy for just a second. I don't know. We will see um, whatever the mood takes me. Oh, Lord, I forgot one thing I forgot to say. Thursday... I finally watched Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them too, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I have no idea why it's called that, by the way, because he's barely in the film. What crimes does he actually commit in that film to constitute that title? Also, does anything happen to advance the plot in this film, or was it all just spectacle? Was it all just loads of nice CGI moments with minimal dialogue to avoid the fact that there's barely any story? I thought whilst I was watching it, I enjoyed it. But in terms of things, when I'm thinking about the fact that I was sat there for two hours and we had one revelation we waited the entire film for that wasn't really that big of a revelation, all I could think was, that looked great, but... I don't think that it worked well. I think that there were a lot of story arcs that Rowling wanted to write about, but she didn't have the space in the film to talk about these arcs that she was trying to craft. I'm interested to see where the story is going to go, but there are very many issues for me Within this film, I didn't like the second hour of the first film. I think that the problem is J.K. Rowling is trying to create a narrative within these films that wasn't present before, and they're not working for me. Also, Polyjuice Potion, again. After I read Cursed Child and saw that, I was annoyed about it. And I'm annoyed about it again. How many wizards just keep Polyjuice Potion hiding around the house? We saw how long it took Hermione to make it. I could probably go a bit more in depth into it, but I don't care that much. Fantastic Beasts. Great spectacle. Little story. What did you think? If you've seen it, do let me know in the comments. I hope you got something out of this video. Feel free to discuss anything I talked about here in the comments. And until next time, that is all.